Ida, thank you so much for joining me today for this quick Q&A. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Um, so um, uh, I, I know you've been uh, coming to Quant Minds for quite a few years now, and uh, you've always talked about volatility modeling. Um, what are the current challenges in that area? Yeah, so I think uh, this year has been particularly interesting, right? Like we had this February meltdown in the market. So I think that was quite interesting because, you know, incidentally, two years ago, uh, in 2018, February as well, we had this big spike. Uh, and, you know, everybody thought at the time, like, well, you know, volatility can spike a lot, but then at the end of the day, it mean reverts. Uh, so that's what we saw two years ago. This year has been quite different, right? Like we had this spike in, in February, uh, but it didn't quite mean revert so quickly. So it, sta it stayed with like, you know, huge levels of volatility for quite a while. And I think that was quite, you know, troubling for, for many traders because, you know, when you trade a big future, you assume this is going to mean revert and somehow, you know, the markets were playing the game of, I'm not going to uh, sell the big futures higher because I think it's going to mean revert. But as time passed, it was not mean reverting, the volatility was high and, and that has caused like a lot of trouble, I think, in the modeling side uh, and also in the trader psychology. Um, that being said, I think uh, that's kind of new, new market phenomena. It's, it's, it's not a challenge, it's, it's more of a, uh, well, it's a challenge actually, but it's, it's more of a, a feature of the markets that we are observing now. Um, the real challenges are still, I think, the same, um, like pricing exotic options, given, you know, all these volatility informations that, that we are getting. Essentially, we are getting to a point where we are gathering more and more informations and we are challenged or we, we have challenges with our models to absorb all of this information and be able to, to price accurately. So I think the challenge still remains there, right? Like finding what's the right way to use our models such that we are sure that we are absorbing the right information, you know, and, and right information, it's not necessarily everything that the market throws at, at, at us. It's just like the information that it's relevant for, for the particular, you know, product that, that we are interested in. So let's talk about your presentation. Um, mm -hmm. You are focusing on the classical smile calibration problem. Um, what are the break, uh, latest breakthroughs here? Yeah, so this is a very classical problem, as, as you said, you know, uh, Bruno Dupier started with this with the local volatility, and that's like a fairly well understood uh, model and problem. Um, so this comes more on the stochastic volatility side. So how can we manage to fit a stochastic volatility model to any market smile? Um, this has been addressed in the literature a few times, um, both, you know, from the more classical mathematics PV approach, but also uh, about eight years ago, if I'm correct, by uh, Guillon uh, and Henri Labordaire with the particle method, which has been kind of like the, the benchmark in the area uh, for high dimensional problems. Um, what I'm trying to do here is, you know, leading uh, or following their lead, essentially, I'm trying to remove some of the issues or concerns that their method has, has risen in, in the industry. Um, and yeah, this is essentially a new approach to solve the same problem, uh, that it's meant to be more robust uh, without any hyperparameters and, and provide some nice closed form formulas that uh, make this uh, algorithm more stable um, in, in production. Um, and I think like it still remains, so numerically we are able to uh, tackle the issue what it remains open is to answer questions theoretically, and that's and that's actually a very very difficult problem. Um, I've seen a few attempts of people like you know um, trying to answer the question on when is this problem well solved, uh, well posed. Sorry, uh, when is this uh, problem not uh, possible to to solve numerically nor theoretically? Um, so that's I think the real challenge in the in the area. But you know so far. Uh, what we have done, and I think it's already a, a very good advance, is to solve this numerically whenever we can and make it quick and, and competitive. Obviously, um, over the past couple of uh, years, um, technological innovations have accelerated and, um, and with that, uh, its use in quant finance. Um, how do you see it influencing your work mm -hmm. and quant finance in general? Yeah. So I think like there's this data tsunami happening right now and we feel the need that 
you know, all our models should absorb all of the data and be like realistic sharp and, and so on. And there's a lot of pressure, I think, to use all of these, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning techniques to try to digest all of it and, you know, give you the holy grail of modeling. Um, I think from my perspective, the, I feel this pressure of, you know, trying to use these technologies because indeed they are very promising. But, you know, at the same time, I think we sometimes ask the wrong questions. Like we are asking too much of this technology that we don't yet understand. And I think, you know, little by little, there are more and more papers uh, being published, especially on the on the sell side, obviously, because sell side tends to be a bit more transparent than the than the buy side and hedge funds. Um, but yeah, definitely, like this has impacted the way uh, we work because I think there's again a lot of pressure to to use these technologies because everybody thinks they are uh, promising. Everybody's publishing good papers, promising papers, promising results. And, and yeah, it's just that, as I said, um, I think we are just starting to ask the right questions to use these uh, tools, which at the end of the day is just, you know, a new tool in the, in the quantitative analysts uh, toolbox. Uh, and it's all looking very exciting, to be honest. Like when you see Google publishing all these papers on video games, uh, I think there's no, you know, there's no doubt that we can apply this to finance. It's just that, you know, we need to think what's the right game to play uh, with this technology to, to solve the problems we, we want. Sounds very exciting uh, again. And um, it's um, interesting to hear that uh, there's a certain amount of pressure as well to, to utilize these, even though they're not necessarily as developed, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in finance. Um, is there one piece of technology that you're particularly excited about? I mean, I think everyone is excited about neural networks, right? Like it's the buzzword, I think, uh, when, when people talk about machine learning. Um, but I think, you know, machine learning is so broad that, you know, it could be anything. Um, I'm, I'm not particularly keen on, on neural networks uh, specifically, even though in the past, you know, I've used them uh, for pricing and, and stuff like that. But I do think like there's new technology like variational autoencoders, uh, which help you, you know, dimension reduction stuff. And I think a lot of promising um, like shifts from classical, more linear statistics to non-linear statistics, which at the end of the day are what, like, what represents better the, the markets. In the end, the market, God knows, you know, what are the dynamics underneath, right? Like we kind of understand the, re the linear patterns, which we observe and are easy to detect, but all the non-linearities are, are hidden. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm very keen in trying, you know, all these machine learning techniques that somehow use nonlinear um, techniques to, to solve the problem. And that's where it becomes uh, really powerful. But, you know, at the same time, uh, because of these nonlinearities, it's also this black box paradigm where we lose control over the interpretation. Um, so, yeah, this is a very thin line and one needs to be careful. Again, there's this pressure coming from, from you know, the, the potential of these technologies. But on the other hand, you have the, a bit of um, holding up yourself because you need to first understand what's going on, be able to, you know, justify this to investors, to model validation teams, uh, and so on. So as I said, I think we are starting right now to, un um, to answer the right questions. Uh, and that's going to allow us, I think, to progress probably in the, in the next couple of years, uh, much quicker than what we have done in the past five or six. I believe this is a really big discussion area uh, at this year's Quant uh, Minds International. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today, uh, Aito, and uh, I'll see you at the conference. My pleasure, Lily. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye.